Hey guys, it's Mark for Fear the Walking Dead, Season 3, Episode 12, Brothers Keeper, and I was definitely really looking forward to um, this episode. This has definitely been a slower start for sure. I haven't loved this second half. I think it's been a bit slow. Honestly, I didn't really know where it was going to go. However, this episode, not the case at all. This was a great episode. I really love what we got here. Really shocking stuff, and there really is no telling where the rest season is going to go after this, because they went into a completely unexpected direction that I did not expect them to go at all. But let's just get into this episode, because I'm definitely interested in seeing, you know, how this is all really going to play out. And, uh... Just like last week's episode focused all on Daniel and Madison and Strand trying to locate this dam, this entire episode focused on how the Broke Jaw Ranch is holding up without Madison. Are they able to hold up, and can Alicia and Nick, can they maintain the peace and things like that, and... We see right in the beginning, in the desert, Troy is killing a snake for food. He's been out alone for a while, based on his dirty appearance, and he's keeping notes in a book before looking to his gun, which also has a bullet in the chamber, and he finds Bill, who, um... Walker actually fed to the birds much earlier before exploring further, and he comes upon a barn, he walks inside, looks around, scavenging for supplies, and he eventually finds canned food, and he scurves it down before venturing to another part of the house, and he finds a frame message that reads, God help those who help themselves, and he opens a pantry door and smiles before heading outside. So he starts digging, night has taken over, he's keeping notes by a fire, and the next day he heads to a chair on the edge of a mountain, gun in hand, he analyzes the gun and looks around and he stands up points the gun in the air uses his only bill to fire straight into the sky and attract a herd of walkers so we don't really know why he's trying to attract them or what's really going on here but we then see back near the ranch, Nick then watches men, um, dispatch infected, headed their way. Nick rules the dead, are actually drawn by the the cattle, but a man from the nation determines that they'll die soon from a lack of water. Because if you remember, they don't have much water left. They'll, you know, Madison and Strand, they're doing what they can to try to get these resources, but they can't be certain it's actually going to work. So Nick walks over, he shoots a cow in the head, and... Elsewhere, we see Jake, he expresses frustration with Alicia over the group putting down the herd, and Alicia vouches for it. She promises that they will start over, and if they live long enough, she will actually get him more cows. And Sam believes, and you know, he believes that there are people who are still alive in the Pacific Northwest, and Alicia insists that it's too far. There's no way they can actually get him there, and, and he wants to bunker down and travel with only Alicia. And it was a really good scene, because... I think, you know, we, we've really seen the, these two really blossom into this really great relationship, and I think, you know, he really wishes that life was simpler for them, and that things could be easier, and that they could just have their life together, but that's just not the case, unfortunately, and I do think that was something that was very well shown here. So Ophelia then sits with her friend, she tries to raise his spirits, the man actually trusts Nick to lead both groups and claims everyone trusts him because he doesn't like to lead, and that's the only reason why they really do trust Nick, because he doesn't want to be a true leader, and because of that, they don't have to be subservient to him. They just kind of have to, you know, they just kind of agree with many of his ideals rather than um, being, you know, barked orders at. So Nick and Alicia then stay on the ranch balcony talking, and she lights a cigar with him, and he's feeling guilty for killing Otto. It's really starting to get to him. He's staying in his house and Nick and Missy, he's worried about uh, Madison, but he's also very worried about Troy, which, I mean, you know, everyone's been worried about Troy since we were introduced to him, and Alicia assures Nick that there's no need to feel guilt over killing Troy, because everyone has pretty much wanted Troy dead, except for Otto, everyone's wanting to kill Troy. So, basically, you're like, okay, this is gonna be the time where it seems like Troy might actually die here. So, later during the night, Nick hears something in the house. He jumps out of bed, carrying a big knife, and investigates, and on the balcony, he hears something behind him, and there's Troy. He's waiting in the doorway, and this is really when the episode uh, gets off to, it really starts to get going, because he startles him. He won't sit down because he'll pass out, but he says he's here to return the favor of saving him, and 
and he then warns Nick of a reckoning. He says that there's a beast from the desert, and he says it's bigger than he can imagine, and Nick isn't interested. He offers Troy the option to either sneak out or be hidden for a couple of days, because, you know, everyone kind of wants Troy dead at this point, and Troy claims that there's actually a third way. So he closes the door and tells Nick that this whole place will be obliterated in a few hours, and he wants Jake to actually see it. So... He finds a way in, searching for Troy, but he can't find him. And again, you see that he's still trying these manipulation tactics on Nick, but it's clearly wearing off. It's not really having an effect on him anymore. And the next day, Jake and Alicia prepare breakfast, and Alicia's eager to find a solution for their water problem because she knows that they don't really have much left, but she wants to make sure that the ranch can stay, you know, maintain this peace because they're in a good place right now, and she wants to make sure that she can actually do something about it. But Jake insists they need a more permanent solution than anything that she has suggested. He's ready to leave this place, but she is not. For some reason, she wants to stay here, and Jake is skeptical of their relationship, calling it actually an alliance. That's not really much of one, because they both don't really, they're not looking out for each other's best interests, and she doesn't really seem like they can move forward, because he wants to leave, and she doesn't, and he, she's insulted, obviously. So, Nick then knocks on the door to tell Jake that Troy was at the house, and Jake is ready to go face Troy, and Alicia says that he's just baiting them, but they're going to, and Alicia insists that Jake at least bring a walkie. So they drive down the road. Jake is armed with a pistol. He, at this point, he's ready to kill him. He's ready to kill Troy. He doesn't care what he has to do. He will kill him. And Nick then vouches for Troy, saying that he could have hurt any of them last night if he wanted to, but he didn't. And Jake then tells the story about finding a rabbit that was staked to the ground, skinned alive, and he put it down, and he says... And he makes it very clear that Troy's not going to stop. He's not going to get better. And he said that he warned him. And I thought it was a really great line because you're realizing Jake is really one of the only reasons that Troy hasn't been killed. Because Jake has done what he can to cover for him. He's warned him multiple times, but he's never really been um, trustworthy. You know, he's never really found his brother trustworthy. He's always been very much, um, you know, worried about him, and this is it, you know, he's not gonna deal with his shit anymore, and you definitely see that, so, they stop the truck and look at it, there's a massive herd of walkers, and Nick then reels to Alicia that there's a horde, Nick tells her it's coming, they devise a plan to move the herd away from the ranch, but Troy is actually leading them with explosives, remember, he's planning to just obliterate the whole thing, so, at the ranch, Alicia tells Ophelia they need to go help them, but Ophelia is busy being angry that they went out alone, and Alicia tells her about Troy popping into the ranch and convinces her to help that you know she's actually going to need them here so Jake then approaches Troy but Nick insists on speaking to him first and Nick tells him straight out that he's not right in his head and uh that you know it's what he's what the, the, his whole thinking is just very wrong and Troy has been leading the group for two days Jake then cocks his gun and asks Troy to stop, but Troy says that he loves the sound of a gun, and Troy rises up, talks about how accomplished Jake always was, and he's proud now, though, of the art he's created with this horde, and he takes aim with his launcher and fires, and you can tell at this point, he's, you know, one of them's gonna die, one of them is going to die in this exchange, Jake then tackles him, the explosion is then heard at the ranch, and Jake then orders Nick back to the ranch, he argues with Troy, who's struggling, and Nick tries to talk Jake out of killing him, that, that there's no way they can actually kill him. I'm saying guilt as a reason not to. That they need to kill him for a different reason than guilt. Don't just kill him because you're guilty. And Troy tells Nick to tell uh, Jake about killing Jeremiah. And Jake appears to have given up. But he takes aim at, uh, at Troy. And Nick, and he doesn't seem to... Um, really care you know he says it doesn't matter to him that he killed Otto because Otto was really the and it makes sense too because Otto was really the one person that kept Troy alive and the one person that was just kind of um you know keeping the reins on Troy he knew very well that Troy was up to no good but for the same but at the same time Troy was the one who was in the most support of his father and now that Otto's dead there's really nothing that's going to stop him here so Nick then used a rifle to knock him down the hill and at the ranch the nation and ranchers plot their last stand meanwhile Jake then battles a walker he gets bit on his arm and Jake orders them to cut his arm off and Nick does it in one swing of a machete and that was incredible I mean you thought that Troy was going to die in the scene but that's not 
actually what ends up happening at all. I thought it was just a very surprising scene. It was something I think we were inevitably going to get to, is this whole takedown of Troy, but this does not at all go the way that we thought was going to be, you know, the, the way that we thought it was going to, and it's easily one of my favorite scenes the episode so far, without a doubt. So in the ranch basement, the remaining leaders discuss their plans. The ranchers want bullets, and Lee is furious. He storms off, but Ophelia insists on the keys to arm everyone at the ranch. And meanwhile, Nick then ranch races back to the ranch in the pickup truck as Troy then holds Jake in the back. And the group fortifies the ranch with RVs. They're hoping the herd is deflected and passes them by. And Lee orders everyone behind the wall. The survivors then rush behind it, and they stand armed and ready. And later, they hear the dead walking into the fences and walls. The gate then breaks open. Alicia's looking on between between the RVs and sees the never-ending herd arriving and from a distance Nick is watching with binoculars and when I say never-ending I mean there is a huge herd here and the RV starts to rock as a dead push against them they start crawling out from beneath the trucks and the ranchers and nation try to put them down and in the distance we see Jake has actually passed out and Troy then kneels beside him, saying that he wasn't supposed to die. Nick tells him that he will need to put him down now, and it seems that Jake has actually bled out. He's died from a loss of blood, and uh, it has actually gotten him, which I was shocked about. I did not think that they were actually going to kill Jake here, but that kind of seems to be the case. And Troy says that he wanted him to see. Nick orders him to look at the ranch to see what he has really done. And Troy begs Nick to come to just put him out of his misery. And Nick then kicks him a gun and says, kill yourself. He's not just going to give Troy the, what he wants. There's no way he's going to do that. You know, Troy need, needs to live with this because Jake is only dead because of what Troy's really done. And I would very much agree with that, that because of everything that Troy's really done here, um, that's why his brother's dead. So at the ranch, the herd has stopped coming under the RVs. There are two packed against them to make one way. One RV starts to slide back, eventually tips over, and Alicia orders everyone to the pantry. So they flee. Nick then looks on, and Alicia just starts dispatching walkers with ease using a machete, one after the other. Ophelia orders her to the pantry, says that she will follow, and Alicia directs everyone to the pantry along the way. And again, we see how great of a leader Alicia really is here. One by one, people are following, including Koopa the Militia. He's eaten alive in front of Alicia, and he tries to shoot himself, but he's unfortunately out of ammo, and Alicia just has to shoot him in the head. So up the hill, we see Jake. He's reanimated as a walker, and on the ground level, Alicia's then out of ammo. Lee then aids her with his last bullet. They use their guns as clubs to push through the horde, but they're actually surrounded, and Ophelia and Lee then find a clearing to the pantry. And uh, right at the very last second, we get to the end, we see Troy actually puts a knife in Jake's skull. He says he needs sleep, and Nick insists they need to find a way to save everyone that he tried to kill, and he says that he can sleep when he's dead. And, you know, that's when he gets to finally sleep here. So in the pantry, everyone looks to Alicia for guidance, and that is how this episode ends. Oh, holy shit. I mean, things really went from 0 to 50 really fast here, and that's really one of the things that I really love here, because it was clear that we were building to something. I just didn't really know where the rest of the season is going to go, but I have to say, after this, I'm really intrigued now, because I never would have thought that in a million years, Jake would have actually died before Troy. I thought it would be the other way around, but honestly, it makes a lot more sense, because Jake dying is basically by cause of Troy. That's the main reason why Jake is actually killed here, because, you know, Troy just stooped so low that Jake was ready to kill him. But unfortunately, Troy, once again, was always one step ahead, and he was actually killed instead of Troy. And uh, I thought it was a really great moment, the way that was all played out, you know, with uh, Jake uh, basically, you know, Nick not killing Troy now, because you can tell... Troy wants to die, you know, there's no way that he wants to go on after this, I mean, he saw his own brother die, it's not really something he's gonna get over anytime soon, but I like that Nick's telling him, no, you can, you know, you can sleep when you're dead, because this is all basically Troy's fault, and we're definitely seeing that here. But the big question now is what's really going to happen with Troy? Because, I mean, everyone really does want this guy dead. But it seems like no matter what anyone does, they can't really kill Troy. He just finds a way to outdo them. And there just isn't a way to really uh, kill him at this point. So I don't know how this is really going to go, what Troy's really going to do here. I think it's going to be very interesting. 
But I think it made sense why Jake kind of had to die. Uh, for two reasons. One, because of the fact that he was kind of dead weight at this point. I feel like he didn't really have much more to do on the show. And two, this gives Alicia a lot more of a heroic sort of arc here. Because it's clear that, you know, while Nick doesn't want to be a leader, Alicia absolutely does. And I think we're definitely seeing why Alicia should, in fact, be a leader. Because she's quite good at it. And she knows how to kind of... Um, you know, help out these people. It seems like she really does know how to be a good leader and maintain this heroic ground that she very much does respect, and we definitely do see that here. And now, how long she's going to be able to do this, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's definitely going to be interesting to see if she actually does maybe have some success in being a leader, and it seems that she kind of does here, so we'll have to see the way that really does go down. Um, Ophelia was really the only thing in this episode I wasn't the hugest fan of. I just, there's not really a ton going on with her right now. Uh, it's clear that she doesn't really want to listen to Alicia, but she kind of has to because her life's kind of on the line, so... I just don't really know where we're leading towards there. I know eventually Daniel's probably going to reunite with her, but again, I don't really know where we're leading towards. I think that's definitely going to be interesting overall. Um... But I'm guessing that, you know, the next episode looks insane. It definitely looks like, you know, this is not going to end anytime soon. And again, you can tell Alicia she wants to be able to uh, maintain this ground because, you know, they have, in fact, established a truce with the nation. It seemed like everything was okay there. And it seemed like finally the Broke Jar Ranch could actually be in this peaceful, you know, sort of mode. But. Of course, something had to break it, and we definitely did see that here, and I thought it was definitely a very well executed. And again, I just don't know where we're really going here, but it's not a bad thing. I, I'm very impressed with the way that this episode went. I mean, I did not at all expect for them to kind of... Um, you know, completely just turn things on us. Really, my only complaint with this episode besides Ophelia is that I did feel that things maybe were a bit rushed here. And Troy, as a character, uh, while he's compelling, I feel like he's kind of one note at this point. The fact that he is so merciless and he, we can tell, is upset about his brother. You know, he definitely does have a soul. We definitely do see that. Uh, but... I definitely am interested in seeing really where they're going to go with him as a character at this point. You know, is he maybe going to try to turn things around? Because, I mean, Jake even said that he's not going to change anytime soon, and he's very aware of that. But after something like this, what's this really going to do to Troy? Is it going to have any effect on him whatsoever? Is this maybe going to want to turn things around? Or is he just going to be same old uh, dangerous Troy that we've seen throughout the season? I just don't really know how that's going to go. Um, and also, how long are they going to stay at the ranch? Because, I mean, from what it seems like, this is not really a safe area at this point. And if I were Alicia and Nick, I'd try to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. I really don't blame Jake for wanting to leave because it really does not seem like this is really a safe area anymore. I know that they got here because they thought that this was a temper, you know, this this uh, safe haven for them, but it seems like their stay is very quickly coming to an end. So again, I, I try to get out of there as, as quickly as possible. But again, I think we'll just have to see the way all this does play out. I don't know if we're going to see Madison and all of them next week, but right now I am much more interested in what's going on in the ranch than whatever's going on with the dam. I mean, it's, it's interesting, but this is the story that I'm most interested in right now. I really am loving what we're getting here overall. Overall, guys, this was definitely one of the best episodes of the season, without a doubt. And I am definitely going to give Fear the Walking Dead Season 3, Episode 12, Brothers Keeper, in A-. minus. So over, guys, doing this episode of Fear the Walking Dead, the most guys saw this episode overall, left your thoughts in it. Where do you think the rest of the season's going to go? We only have, I think, about five or six episodes left, which is insane to think about. But that's in my review. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.